there's a saying that we use every 90 minutes. And that means every 90 minutes nationally, one person leaves us and another person gets diagnosed. So at any given time, there aren't that many of us who have ALS. Every 90 minutes, we gain one and we lose one. We grew up as a beach-going family. My mom and dad both surfed, and they got my sister and my little brother and I into surfing. So we pretty much grew up at the beach, like families do in Hawaii. Growing up, you know, Mikala and I would be on the beach when we were like two and four, and our parents would go and surf bowls, which is the spot that we grew up surfing, and they'd kind of take turns surfing and watching us. So like my dad would be out and then my mom would be like, come on, it's my turn. So then he'd come in and watch us and then she'd go out. So I always had her as like a surfing role model growing up. Yeah, my mom loved the outdoors, the ocean, surfing, swimming, and she's really athletic. She loved to run and bike, swim, do Ironmans rides like 110 miles on her bike and then runs a marathon. There's no way we could ever do that, you know? And we're all professional surfers, so we're like, wow, mom, hats off to her, you know? And it was after she did her third Ironman that something didn't feel right, her feet weren't working very well. It was pretty sudden and really um, hard to see. She always thought she had something, but like it's hard to pinpoint. And she said, oh, it could be ALS. And then we're like, yeah, right. You know, that's, there's no way you could have that. And so they had to do all these tests where they rule everything out until there's nothing else to rule out. Then they're like, oh, well, you have ALS because there's nothing else left to test you, you know? And then uh, that's right around when uh, we were having our first daughter, so. It's been a while now, but... We didn't know what it was. There wasn't really that much information on it, and there definitely didn't seem to be a cure. You know, just watching somebody who was so athletic, to see how debilitating it can be. We watched her go from running, to walking, to having a cane, to having a walker, to a wheelchair and then we were pushing her wheelchair and then a motorized wheelchair and then just seeing her get to the stage where you know she was stuck in bed and then pretty soon she had like a breathing tube and then she couldn't talk and then we were communicating with eye blinks i mean looking back like the progression is pretty it's so intense you know but that was really hard to see was her bedridden, can't move. And imagine like you can't move your hands, legs, any muscle, a machine's breathing for you, but your brain, your brain's normal. She needed 24 hour care, like someone monitor her in the middle of the night and, and like families now, like they're doing it themselves. They like, can't afford to pay someone to do it. We were officially incorporated in 2013. Our mission is to enhance the quality of life of families living in Hawaii with ALS. ALS is also commonly known as Lou Gehrig's disease. ALS stands for amyotrophic lateral sclerosis and it's a disease of the motor neurons. Uh, motor neurons uh, control muscle movement and when these motor neurons die they can no longer tell these muscles to move and then the muscles atrophy. You can hear it in my voice you could probably see it if I were to try and move uh, my hands and arms don't work I've had it for four years now and when it hits it's a shocker. When the shock finally wears off 
you realize you need help. You need help desperately because you can't do normal things. You can't tie your shoes. You can't swallow. You may not be able to breathe. And these things require constant 24-hour attention. Who's going to be there when the care manager leaves the house? Who's going to provide meals for someone? Who's going to be there to build a, a ramp so you can get up the stairs into your house? And that's where the ALS Ohana is trying to help out. Trying to fill in the holes with care that people need but can't get anywhere else. Before ALS, I was very active with outdoor activities such as sports, hiking, night show luaus, and church activities. I loved spending time with my families doing anything just to be around them. I lived a good life, but now I am stuck in this body, unable to help myself or anyone. It becomes depressing not being able to do things I was capable of, but I try to be happy when I am not. This disease is devastating, but I will not let it defeat me. Today, I am still alive, because my mission is not done on this earth. So, I will just have to try and endure this challenging journey. My wife, Mona takes care of me as a full-time caregiver, along with some of my family members. I know it is very difficult for her taking care of me and our children, but she is a strong woman. I am thankful and blessed to have her as my wife. We are also grateful to the ALS Anna for their love and support. We are all family as we are taking this journey together. They have helped us to overcome many obstacles along the way, through their love and support, and that we are not alone. I want people out there to know that although this disease is a challenge, we will survive and defeat it. For me, as a caregiver, his wife, you know, it gets very hard at times, stressful and depressing, you name it. Um, but to, just to see him, you know, have that, that strength to keep going helps me to stay on my my feet and do what I have to do to take care of him and our and our babies. She wanted people in the community, um, other families that were going through ALS, to know what her journey was because there wasn't a lot of support out there. Um, so she was this huge advocate for ALS. Um, and after she passed away, she left some money behind because she wanted to formally incorporate this already grassroots loose leaf effort. So when she passed away, we used that money to officially incorporate ALS Ohana in 2013. Vi had a tremendous amount of support from people who knew her, loved her, and cared for her. And after Vi passed, what was going to happen to that support? There are thousands of Vi's out there who need support, who don't have the, the big support group around them. And what we hope to do is take people who care, who want to help, and tie them in with people who need the help. And then when she passed away, my sister looked at me and she said, you know, I, I don't remember mom being in bed for those two years. I just remember her running and... She did always have a smile on her face. And, you know, one of the things we realized with ALS is that there didn't seem to be a cure and that you have to focus on the quality of life. And for my mom, she just decided to focus on the quality of life. Just seeing her live was my proudest moment. And when I think back, I'm like, this lady did it.